Okay, everybody, before we get started, I just want to say this is a new thing for us. We are not doctors, and we do not use these products or any kind of plant as a medicinal without consulting a medical professional. Some of these can interact with medications and diagnose or undiagnosed conditions. Fair enough? Wait. Got it. Exactly. And if you'd like to support the podcast, link below, Patreon, two episodes a month, exclusive to you. So, now, chamomile, what does it do? It does a lot of things, actually. Um, I'm just going to run through the list of what it does, and then we're going to kind of break down how to grow it, <laughs> how, how it likes to grow, what you can use it for as far as in the garden and your body, and then how to prepare it in that way. But again, this is for entertainment purposes only. This is not meant to diagnose anything. Um, so you can use it for a number of things. You can use it to aid in sleep, anxiety, stomach issues, muscle spasms, and eczema. And the list kind of goes on. But mm -hmm. as I did my research, I found that a lot of it was like kind of out there. You yeah. know, there was some cancer mention and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I'm not really, I don't feel comfortable saying anything about that. But it is important to know that this one in particular has been used since the Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans to treat the conditions that I just mentioned. So it's interesting. Yeah. And I found <clears> the same things that you found, especially as well as some of those things that were a little bit out there, maybe a little bit more making more of a promise than we were comfortable even sharing for entertainment purposes. Yeah. And I'm not really comfortable sharing any kind of promise, but there's that. <laughs> but um, you can, and if you have never seen Camille before... It's a small daisy-like flower, and what that means is it has petals on it, like mm -hmm. distinct oval-shaped petals. Um, it's white flower with or white petals with a yellow center. It's very easy to grow, and it gets to about one to two feet high and about one foot wide. So it's a yeah. nice compact plant. Very delicate looking. Yeah. Yeah. Very delicate. Um, they aren't the easiest to start from seeds, but kind of what herb like plant is um but once they kind of get going you know they can run wild um so i actually this is one of a few that we'll do as a part of this series for these mini minisodes so for those that are listening you already know that ben um, <laughs> and, and so speaking of i have some notes on when to grow it right so um it is something that you want to transplant out if you've started it indoors or if you're buying it you want to put it out once you're past your last frost if you get frost, right? Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily like the colder or freezing or frosty temps. Um, it is something that can self-seed, so keep that in mind. We'll talk a little bit in this series around kind of saving seeds and things. Um, but if you're going to sow it outdoors directly, if you have a longer season maybe, you can do that. Um, you can definitely do that, but again, waiting till after that frost. Indoors, it probably is going to take around 8, even 12 weeks to get ready. I started mine a bit late this year, so we'll see how it turns out. But I had pretty good success last year with starting them indoors and then transplanting them out. Um, I didn't. Let's see. No? Yeah. No, I've never been able to start them by seed ever. Well, it's a volume thing too though, right? So I've been able to start them by seed a couple of years, but you know, your seed pack has 25. And based on what we're talking about and how we're talking about using them, you're gonna probably want more than that, right? Yeah. You know? um, I'm okay with moving on to kind of this next block, and I'm going to take a couple of the first, if that's okay. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. So um, this is probably the most interesting thing I found because I didn't realize there were two distinct types of chamomile, right? So there is a German variety, which is considered an annual in most zones. And I've made an asterisk by this because the only way I can remember German versus the Roman variety was German was noted as annual and then it could have a bitter taste if you use it for tea. And then Roman was noted as a, a perennial, which has a slightly sweeter taste. And it's, quote, perfect for chamomile tea. Um, so I imagine people use either or both when it comes to kind of making the teas. Um, but those are the two things that I kept coming back to because I was trying to, one, study this. If you're watching the video, you can see I have more paper than I've I've printed out Ever. all year, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but those are two things to note. So if you're buying seed packets, and when I started looking online, kind of looking back on what I had previously purchased, it was very clear in the packaging. They note one versus the other. Um, but 
I've only also, ever grown German. That's all I've ever grown. I, I, I think I've only ever grown German as well. Yeah. Because I'm now I'm gonna just I'm gonna take this one and I'll pass it back to you. The size differs based on the the type of plant as well. If it's the German I have noted, it could reach you know anywhere from two feet. Uh, then Roman can actually I'm gonna take that back. I think I've grown Roman because I've grown chamomile that gets about six eight inches high. Um, so basically the Roman variety is a smaller version of the plant where the German variety can get much taller if you yeah. will, and they yeah, both so can get kind of bushy. When I grow the German variety, I get the classic flavor that you get when you buy the teas and everything. Mm -hmm. I've had, that's the classic flavor I've gotten. It's bigger, it's very prolific and for what I'm harvesting it for. Mm -hmm. um, I grew it for a couple years and I'm actually almost out of my flowers and that's why I'm kind of on a push to grow them again because I need more. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> it's, um, they love full sun. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but you, you still, when we say full sun, if you live somewhere hot, you want to protect it from an afternoon heat. Yeah. Your afternoon suns. But, um, and it grow, grow from zone seven, from, uh, excuse me, zones 2A to 9A. So go grow some chamomile everywhere. Mm -hmm, you can grow it. Mm -hmm. Booyah. And yeah. pests aren't really an issue, okay? I've grown them for years. I, I grew it for years. Um, I haven't grown it for the past couple years, but that's changing as of this year. Never had a pest on them, but you can get aphids and thripes. And you can use it as a cucumber beetle deterrent. So mm -hmm. um, you can plant it near your cucumbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know how we, I feel about that stuff. But <laughs> I'm just stating data here. Um, yeah, so the pests are, are n a non-issue, basically. Yeah. Is the yeah. moral of the story here. And I know a lot of people freak out about aphids, but it was very questionable when I did the research that aphids would even be an issue for this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you find generally with herbs, I mean, they seem to... I never get uh, an issue. Yeah, be noted as kind of what repels some of the pests, some of the bugs that we, you know, maybe the bad bugs. Um, so I have, confession, grown chamomile a few different years, and it's going to fold into this next item. I didn't really know when to harvest it. So, oh. yeah, no, I <laughs> know. such a so embarrassing uh, but now i do because as i looked into details for this episode so a few notes here you want to harvest some places say near full bloom so when the flowers as you know like many flowers they start kind of balled up then they open up so once you get to near full bloom and then others say that um, you actually want to let it bloom but you got to get to it before those petals drop Right. So there is kind of a race to that based on how many you may have planted. And then I thought this was interesting because it totally makes sense once I read it aloud. You don't want to harvest it if there's been like first thing in the morning, if there's dew or yeah. after a rain, because your ultimate goal in many of these things is you're going to start with a dried kind of plant, if you will, which, right. for what you're going to use it for. So you don't want to take it off of the plant and it's damp. You want to let the plant kind of let it dry naturally and then harvest it. And for this one, and I'm making this distinction because once you get into the other episodes um, that we're doing as a part of this series, you're harvesting the actual kind of the flower head. So you're just snipping it mm -hmm. versus kind of the rest of the plant. Yeah. So when I harvested mine, I harvested my, um, I usually don't do things like this. I, I'd love to, but in the garden, it doesn't always work. I harvest it every Tuesday afternoon and I would wow. go out there and I would clean off every single flower on there. It didn't matter if it had opened, it was coming off the plant. Mm -hmm. That was my rule. And I would go out there and you can take and you can use scissors. But what I would do is I would put the bud. If you're watching the video, you're getting a bonus because I'm gonna sh you're going to see it. I would put the plant right above my two fingers underneath and I would just mm -hmm. pop it up. Pop it off. And yeah. I would kind of do it like that. And I would just go through like this and pull mm -hmm. them all out. And I would have handfuls. And if the petals were off, I didn't care. Yeah. I just, you yeah. know, because over the that year over the growing season it all kind of evens out you're gonna have some and look i'm gonna go ahead and tell you when you go to buy the tea i guarantee you that it is not <laughs> all the best okay yeah, whatever yeah, you're yeah. gonna do is gonna be way better than what you buy at the store yeah and so, all of those have not been harvested at the optimal time right yeah yeah, yeah. so right. um <clears throat> so you want to use the flowers and leaves if you so desire um the one thing i'll say the reason why i say if you so desire because if you leave the leaves you'll get more flowers 
So you don't mm -hmm. want to necessarily mm -hmm. harvest a whole plant. But, but I love gonna, this idea of having this routine. You know, you're speaking to my, I want yeah. to be organized, but I'm not heart. But that, like, I'm, I don't want to have to look for a pen during the episode, but I'm mentally making a note of every Tuesday. I'm just going to join you every Tuesday. Every Tuesday, go harvest it. That's it. That's the deal. Every time you listen to a minisode, boom, harvest. Come on, um, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so you can use them to make teas, tinctures, or a topical cream. Mm -hmm. So if you remember, we were talking, we went back and we were talking about, um, I mentioned that it can treat eczema. I'm not going to use the word cure, but mm -hmm. it can help to treat eczema. Well, a tea is not really going to help you with that, but a topical cream will. Yeah. And I've done, I've made all of these before. So tinctures are really easy. You just take your herbs, you put them in a mason jar, you fill it with vodka. So you want to do about a third of a mason jar and then the rest with vodka. And then you let it sit in a dark cabinet for about six to, six to eight weeks. And just shake it every once in a while. Don't shake it. It doesn't matter. It's all going to, that'll just kind of leach everything out of it. So <clears throat> you can do that. And then when you're done, you take it, you strain it all out. And you, you're you going to strain it through a cheesecloth. And you take the cheesecloth and you squeeze it as hard as you can. And that'll get everything out of it, all those good nutrients and stuff out of it. And then you're going to put it into a dark little bottle and stick it in the cabinet. And make sure you label it. And then you can just use it. You use like one teaspoon, one tablespoon at a time. You can mix it in water. You can put it right under your tongue, you know, whatever you want. And it's kind of, it's going to have a little bit of a vodka flavor, but it's not like you're going to get hammered off of it. So, you, yeah. um, you know, we've used it for all kinds of things. So, um, teas. Wait, before but, you go on, um, yeah. I was struggling with the use of vodka in this yeah. way and not the traditional way that I'm accustomed yeah. to using it. Um, but just, I, I want to make sure I understand so I don't have to look this up. Um, when you're straining it, that's a part, that that liquid is a part of what's going to be in the tincture, right? That liquid is the tincture. Yeah. Okay. And so then you're, you're squeezing all of the goodness from the petals and the, the flower right. itself out into that as well. Yeah. I mean, okay. I, think about it. Anybody who makes pot brownies, they do the mm -hmm. same thing. You squeeze everything you can. You get every last little bit out of it. Got it. And you'll just squeeze it until it's dry. And then, you know, you'll put it in there. <clears throat> and then teas, straightforward. Mm -hmm. You dry it. Mm -hmm. You can use it as a loose leaf tea. You can buy, actually, you can buy tea bags. Maybe, um, actually not maybe. We're going to add to the um, Amazon list empty tea bags so you can do tea bags and then what i would do is i'd sit down i'd staple tea bags i'd fill them up and staple them boom put mm -hmm. a tablespoon or two in whatever you want doesn't matter mm -hmm. it does not have to be technical people yeah. telling you now topical creams are a little bit more difficult and i'm not really going to give you the ratio but what i'll give you is what you need so you're going to need the herb you're going to need um, beeswax and you're going to mm -hmm. need some kind of vitamin e oil and what that does is, and because what we're going to do is you're going to break all that down. You're going to get everything out of the flour and then you're going to melt the beeswax and mix it with the vitamin E oil. And then that, the ratio you use will determine how the consistency in which it'll be. Mm -hmm. And you, you can buy tins, empty tins, and you can pour it in, stuff like that. So you'll pour it in just like a liquid and it'll dry and it can either be as hard as you want or as soft as you want based on that. Um, I may do a video later on about that. I don't make too many of them, but you know, that's something that we may do. So just know that those are the ingredients that you need and then you can move forward from that if you choose so. And you would just apply that on the affected area, you know? Mm -hmm. And I mean, the way I look at it is if it doesn't work, so what, what does it matter? Like, what have you done? You know what I mean? You've learned how to make something that could be a medicine and you can apply this to many other herbs, mm -hmm. these techniques. But it can still, you know, it can still help. So yeah, a part of this episode and this series in general, like we want to grab your attention about a particular plant or a particular herb, right? And we want you to be able to say, "Huh, I may be interested in using this for more than a pretty flower or a yeah. pretty plant." And then the intention is for you to look into this on your own, right? As well as again, consult a medical professional. Um, and so we don't want to give away all the secret sauce. Um, because there's still clearly more episodes of Grey's Anatomy that are running. And, you know, I just, I don't know when they're going to cover off on this topic. Um, and so until then, again, <laughs> consult your people. Uh, but I, 
we, um, Ben was, he gave me a little bit of grace here because I had to take some extra time to prepare for this episode or these episodes, these next few. Um, but this was really a great learning experience for me. Um, we have fought over herbs and the importance of herbs in the garden over these last three years. We as in Ben and I, yeah. and uh, I'm coming around. And in part, it's just, I just didn't realize the benefit from many of them, you know, or even if you go back to, you know, taking aside medicinal purposes, just even the benefits and the addition that it can make to a meal. Like I didn't make that connection, it's right? Hard to. You know, yeah. yeah. And so, um, and then you kind of have that battle of like the winter harvest. So that's why that's going to be one of the key things we cover off on it with each of these plants. Because uh, we don't want you to miss the window, right? No, and I mean, we we specifically picked for this series like fairly common either stuff you've seen as a medicinal mm -hmm. or stuff that you would grow already. So, yeah. you know, tea is definitely like, it's, that's a thing, you know, yeah. and who doesn't like a good cup of chamomile tea? You know, I just went backpacking. Uh, we were out in the woods for five days. And I stopped at the store. I was like, crap, I forgot my chamomile tea. So I had to stop and buy it. It's $5 for a box yeah. of chamomile tea. Yeah. $5. Now, hey, look, based within, on some of the other things I'm watching, you don't know what they're cutting that stuff with either. Well, and see, that's a thing too. And you're going to, I mean, spoiler alert for other stuff, but the vitamin and, and natural market, I don't know how to, you know, natural medicinal market is not regulated. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you could have anything in there. Mm -hmm. You know, there's one thing that we do make. Um, we get CBD chamomile tea. So mm -hmm. you're kind of doing two things at once with that. So there's all these different things you can do with it. And it's it's really important that you know that this stuff is out there. Because, I mean, did you know that aspirin is just a synthetic form of a bark? No, I did not. Yeah. So it's a, a think, if I'm not mistaken, it's a willow tree bark. I think it's the white willow, and it's just a synthetic form of that. That's all it is. There's a drug that they give cancer patients. It's just, it's I can't remember the name of it. My wife will be able to tell you. But it's a synthetic form of uh, marijuana, cannabis, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, because it I helps treat. That, yeah. You know, so there's all of these medicines, that not all of them, but mm -hmm. a majority of medicines we take are just synthetic forms, which do make it more concentrated. Now, let me not trip yeah. on that. But, you know, it makes it more concentrated form of it but to treat something so with enough chamomile you could knock out an elephant mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i don't know how much it would take but yeah you know yeah. so these are all things that you can use for yourself and your body and grow in your yard and make you feel like you're making a difference mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah and i think that um I, it wouldn't be me if we didn't round this out with and it's pretty it is pretty. You know, so <laughs> it is pretty. And one tip I will give um, about growing chamomiles: what I did is I planted it in a pot next to my garden because mm -hmm. it can self seed. I didn't want it to self seed into my garden, so I just had like a little, I don't know, couple gallon pot sitting right there, and I had it growing in there. So that's something you can do, or you can put it in a place where it could self seed and freely grow all you want. Mm -hmm. But that's mm -hmm. what I did. I think it self seeded for three years before it finally crapped out on me. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, okay, everybody, we are coming up on time. So next week is going to be the patrons only episode. So if you would like to hear, ooh, it's a good one too. So um, <laughs> sorry, everybody. If you'd like to hear about that, you can come check it out. If but, they'd like um, to hear about the good one. Yeah. The good one. Yeah. Yeah. So um, go check it out. Become a patron. Help support us and um, grow some chamomile. It can be grown from zones 2A to 9A. There's no excuse. Oh yeah, see ya. See, see, see ya.